Hi, Ida. How are you? I'm fine. Hi, Melissa. Feeling good? How I'm feeling full and happy. Good. Your, husband's a, your husband's a great chef. Thank you. I will tell him that. <laughs> Please. So tell me, how did you get into music? Um, I got into music through my, uh, my parents. They would listen to classical music all the time at home and they listen to Mozart and Beethoven and uh, I have really nice memories of driving back from Florida and listening to uh, the Pastoral or the Jupiter Symphony as, uh, as we were driving along on the 8-track player <laughs> way back in 1875. <laughs> <laughs> so when did you first start writing your own music? Ah, oh, many years after that, certainly. I uh, took lessons for a long time, uh, but only in performance. Uh, I was working with Miss Gladys Whale in Ottawa, and she was a wonderful teacher, um, but uh, we never did anything in terms of composition. I first started writing my own music when I left home, and I was living on the streets of Vancouver. And that inspired me. The people there inspired me to write because I had never heard songs written about them. And why did they deserve that any less than somebody who perhaps has been more celebrated in song? And now you're writing and performing your own original classical music. How did that come about? Um, chiefly because of a disastrous trip I had in Morocco. Uh, I had been to Morocco a few times with the rock bands and finally had the opportunity to take my own. But uh, I became ill shortly after I arrived and when I got out of the hospital I had found uh, that, uh, well, you know, mutiny, uh, the assorted stuff had gone on. And when I returned I didn't really feel like working with musicians anymore. I felt like being a solo artist. And you know, I had been working uh, for ballet companies for at least 10 years at that point in time. I'd been, I just started work at seniors' homes playing and entertaining the elderly. And uh, it really wasn't difficult to do more of that work instead of bashing my head against the wall in the nightclubs. So tell me a little bit about these concerts that you give at seniors' residences. Uh, it's a... How did that come about, really? Well, I started working at church services at one residence in Cote St. Luke in Montreal. And uh, I just love doing that. I'm still working at the same residence, in fact. I work there today, and it's still just a pleasure. And some of the people that I was playing for when I started are still there. And that gives me a lot of, uh, a lot of gratitude. One lady in particular uh, just totally loved music. And even though she was Jewish, she would come to the... Christian services or the ecumenical services because she loved to sing along with the hymns. And when she moved, I followed her and did volunteer work for her because I loved to play music for her so very much. Now I'm playing uh, between, I guess, 12 and 15 residences uh, between Ottawa and Montreal. And I play many hours each week doing that. And it's just a pleasure in my life. You have to really love it because it's a lot of time invested. Ah, but you know what? Everybody has to work hard in life. You know, if you don't work hard in life, you're not working. You haven't found what you love. And I'm fortunate to work at what I love. I mean, now I go to work, it's going to play. Fantastic. It is. <laughs> and what other inspirations do you draw upon when you write your music? I love traveling. So a lot of the songs I've written, uh, a lot of the pop songs I wrote, I wrote when I was uh, in Morocco or Turkey or Israel. Um, anything unusual really draws some sort of inspiration from me. For instance, um, I wrote the Tangier Suite about uh, little places in Morocco like the Petit Soup where William Burroughs wrote Interzone. You can just sit on a balcony there and watch the world go by. And there are all these weird characters, you know, doing their thing and doing the hustle there. It's a fascinating place. But, for example, another place I, I wrote about is uh, En Gedi, which is in the desert in the uh, south of Israel, just off the Dead Sea. Now, up until 1957, this was just barren desert, nothing there. You know, uh, but at that point in time, 120 students and soldiers 
decided to create a little garden of Eden there by diverting a small stream called Val David. And by doing that, they created an oasis that just can, it will surpass anything your imagination can give you. I mean, just astounding trees and flowers and natural beauty right in the middle of a desert. And so if humans can do that, and give some hope for this damaged planet. Sounds like paradise. It is. You must go. What other subjects do you write about? Um, a lot of my older compositions I wrote around dances. Because, of course, working for ballet companies, I watch the dancers' feet, I'd be forced to improvise. You have to know what a rond de jambe will be danced to in order to accompany it. And uh, so a lot of my older inspirations came from that. Um, my family's inspired me a lot. My, uh, my uh, dad, I'm working on a composition for him right now. Uh, my mom I've written many works for, my beautiful wife, her daughters. Uh, her parents had their golden wedding anniversary a couple of years ago. And I wrote two compositions for that, which I actually performed at the uh, celebration itself. Beautiful. What a, what a gift they received. Well, they've given me a lot of gifts too, so <laughs> no, it's wonderful. So you mentioned your parents. Yeah, my, uh, my dad is a, was a top uh, research scientist. Uh, he was a wood chemist. He passed away in 2000, but uh, he was published many times in Scientific American. He was one of the top uh, in Eastern Canada, at least. And uh, however, his greatest gift was uh, in his ability to educate me. I'm sure of it. He had a system worked out with his imagination, with marionettes, with cue cards. He would tell a story, and we'd get to a certain place, and I was totally into the story, and then he'd hold up the cue card, and I'd have to read it. So I'm two years old, and I was reading. So apparently at four years old, I was reading the Globe and Mail, and it's because he was able to give me this love of learning, this love of letters through using marionettes, using play. And uh, so I think that's a wonderful thing, and I'm always treasuring that in my heart because I'm still an avid reader. It's, it gives me so much pleasure. My mom as well. I mean, she brought me into music. She really taught me a lot about manners too, and, and how to treat people with respect. And that's a huge gift in this world. It's very important to have that. But she's amazing in many other respects. I mean, I'm sure if she got into just about any field, she would be at the top of it. She chose to work at home, so her garden is absolutely amazing. Her food is the reason I'm a food snob today. And <laughs> I can particularly enjoy your husband's cooking. <laughs> so that's something that, uh, I mean, we look at that and some, some people take it for granted. But that's something that will inspire me in song, no question about it.